Hi, this is the Chemistry for Biology channel. I'm John Irwin. We're talking about Zinc-15, and this is brought to you by the University of California, San Francisco, Department of Pharmaceutical Chemistry, the Irwin Lab, and the Schoikit Lab. And the work is supported by the National Institutes of Health. And our topic today is metabolites in zinc. And we're going to begin by just talking about what metabolites are and how they're classified. So a lot of people talk, So, and one of the problems is that people use different names depending on who you're talking to. So just to be absolutely clear, we'll take a minute or two and go over this. So let's start with primary metabolites. Primary metabolites, the definition is that they're essential for survival. And so they include things like hormones, amino acids, lipids, and so on. And they're often ca just called metabolites pr or primary metabolites. Secondary metabolites are not essential for survival in the usual sense of the word of that word, but instead they're used for biodefense um, or interspecies communication. And secondary metabolites are often called natural products. Now I want to distinguish a couple of other things. So there's also exogenous. So these are all, I've, everything I've talked about so far I've, has been endogenous metabolites. There can also be exogenous, that is to say metabolites of drugs or metabolites of food. So these are compounds that are not of biogenic origin that have been processed by the, by, by the organism's machinery, uh, metabolic machinery. Okay. So sometimes when people say natural products, they really mean secondary me metabolites only. Sometimes they mean natural products means both primary and secondary. So watch out for that. And so in, to be clear, we use the word biogenic to refer to the ensemble of both the secondary metabolites, natural products, and primary metabolites, also called metabolites. I hope that's clear. And so then there's some borderline cases, like for example, what about molecules that are made by the bacterial flora in the gut? Do those count as endogenous? Uh, vitamins, they must, they must be taken from a dietary source, but most people think of them as an endogenous human metabolite. Similarly, essential amino acids. Okay, so there's some cases where there's room, some room to quibble. How are compounds of biological origin handled in zinc-15? Well, here's what here's what we've done. So we're going to call so when an endogenous human metabolite, we're going to just use endogenous for short. These are very special molecules, molecules that exist in our bodies and have their origin in our bodies. And then we're going to have a second level of metabolites, which we're going to call metabolites of any species. And so all endogenous human metabolites are a member of the set of me the metabolites of any species. However, the natural products have no overlap with metabolites. So remember, natural products are secondary metabolites. And then when you put them together, the natural products and all the metabolites together, you have the biogenic compounds. So I hope that's clear. That's how we're going to call them in zinc. So before I get started with the live demo, I just wanted to remind you that we've recently published a paper. It's called Zinc 15, Ligand Discovery for Everyone. It's available over at the Journal of Chemical Information and Modeling, and it's free for everyone to download. So let's get started with the demo. Let's get started with the demo. So here we are at zinc15.docking.org. And we're going to start by clicking on substances. And then within substances, because metabolites and natural products are, of course, substances, we're going to click on subsets. So here we are inside zinc15.docking.org slash substances subsets. And as you can see, so the first subsets are availability oriented, purchasability oriented. But then, and then bioactives and drugs are here. And then biogenic subsets are down here. So we have, let's go through them. We have meta endogenous, okay, primary metabolites observed in humans, metabolites, primary metabolites of any species, non-human metabolites, so that's the yellow triangle minus the blue triangle, natural products, secondary metabolites, and then biogenic is the ensemble of all of them. So imagine we start with the Let's start with metabolites. And so we click on it. And so here we are. And I'm introducing you to the zinc 
um, URL scheme at the same time. So zinc15.docking.org slash substances subsets metabolites. So you can already predict what it should have been for natural products, biogenic, and for that matter, FDA and all kinds of other things. So here you are, you have some compounds that are according to our sources, these compounds are all of biogenic origin, okay, from any species. However, you'll immediately recognize you might have some questions about some of these molecules. So, this is my chance to tell you that these compounds come from... We can't possibly annotate all these ourselves. So we derive this information from catalogs that are included in zinc. Now, if you want to understand how that works, let's switch over for a moment to catalogs. So we click on catalogs, and now we look at subsets. And now these are now subsets of catalogs, not subsets of substances. I hope that's clear. So looking under biogenic, and if we look under endogenous, now these are the catalogs that we... So if a molecule is a member of one of these catalogs, then it is given the property of an endogenous human metabolite. So we have isoprenoids, HMDB endogenous subset, phosphate sugars, and dipeptides. Of course there are more than this, but these are the sources, these are the publicly available sources that we have been able to obtain. Okay, um, so similarly, let's, while we're here, let's just look at metabolites. So now these are subsets. If, if a molecule is a member of one of these catalogs, it is given the uh, attribute that it's a metabolite. So E. coli metabolome, HMDB microbe, HMDB plant, Streptome is a database of a streptococcus uh, originating compounds, and the yeast metabolome. If you are aware of a catalog that we have not included, we would be happy to include it here. All you have to do is tell us. Now, under natural products, there's even more. So we're going to look under uh, biogenic, okay, biogenic catalogs. And so now these catalogs are of, uh, so for example, African uh, natural products um, and uh, herbal ingredients are from herbs, so they're natural products. Uh, this is Brazilian natural products and so on. Okay, so I hope that's all very clear. So if a compound is a member of one of these catalogs and not a member of one of the metabolites, remember it always gets the highest biogenic level that we're allowed to give it. Okay, let's go back to substances and let's go back to subsets and let's go back to um, and let's go back to metabolites. By the way, the estimates are over here on the right hand side. So as you can see, there's the molecules. How many are there? Get total counting. There's 70,539 metabolites, according to our information. How many of these can be purchased? Well, we click on this icon, the, the label icon, and you can see that the metabolites subset is in effect. And if we were to click on that again, it would remove metabolites as a subset. However, what we want to do is we want to say, is it for sale? Is the compound for sale? So we're going to click on for sale. And now you can see that the URL is substances, subsets, metabolites, plus for sale. And now you can see that uh, the number has diminished from 70,000 to only 15,000. So a substantial diminution of the number of metabolites based on commercial availability. You could actually ask for compounds that are also, this is sort of fun, metabolites for sale that are also FDA approved. And here we've already counted them for you. There's 399. Again, according to our information, if you have information that something is wrong here, you can tell us about it. You can, you can tell us about it by email, you can tell us about it by Twitter, you can write on our YouTube channel, or if you want, you can go in to the detail page of an individual molecule and you can tell us about the problem at the bottom. There's a system called, uh, called uh, Discus, and you can say this molecule is wrong and here is how okay you can tell us about it and then we will pay and then you say post 
and then we will pay attention. I'm not going to do that right now. Okay. So there's more. We've written on our wiki about metabolites, and we've written an exa examples of URLs and a series of, sort of questions and answers about metabolites that we thought you might be interested in. So it's wiki.talking.org, index.php, metabolites. You can also simply go to our wiki like this, and if you just type in metabolites, oops, that wasn't good, metabolites. It'll take you straight to the page. And so you can um, run through some of those examples. I, uh, I really want to keep the videos short. And I'd rather have more videos that are focused so people don't get bored watching them. So was that helpful? Did you learn something about A, metabolites and natural products, B, how zinc works, um, and a little bit of how to use zinc, and see you know how to use our wiki and also give us feedback if you found it helpful you can subscribe to our youtube channel you can follow us on facebook or twitter and we encourage you to write us we really we can't respond to everything but please do write us if you find this software useful or if there's something a little bit more that you need and uh, this is a last chance to remind you that we're very grateful to the nih that gives us financial support to do this. See you next time.